Welcome to Educator.com's Adobe Premiere Elements 11 uh, training course. And in this course, we're going to go over the very latest version of Premiere Elements, which is 11. Um, this one just came out not too long ago. And uh, you can either get it as a retail box or you can get it as a download from Adobe and later on in this video we're going to go over how to install it but before we do that because some of you might have already installed it I put that last so once we get to that if you've already installed it you can just go to the next video but before we get to installation let's go over some of the things that um, after you install it when you start up Premiere Elements the first time I will show you what screen you get and that screen is called the startup screen and let me show you what that looks like this here is the Premiere element startup screen if you also installed Photoshop elements uh, and you go to start that one you also get a screen that's similar to this one and what this is there are a few different things you can do here you can go straight to the organizer and if you've ever used any um, Creative Suite programs, this is kind of like Bridge, except it's a uh, specialized version of it that's made to work with Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements. And then you can also go to the video editor here, which will go straight into editing video. And you also have a choice up here on this little wheel. You can tell it what you want to start with on your launch so if you know that you always go in first and load video and organize it and add metadata and all the other stuff to it you can tell it to go straight to the organizer first if you just go straight into editing and you just want to do some quick editing and you don't want to have to go through all of the organization you can tell it to go straight to the video editor if you always want a choice when you start up, you can just leave it here at the welcome screen. Now, even if you change it here, you can get back to this screen, and I will show you that when we get into either the organizer or the video editor. So, the next piece I want to show you is the actual organizer itself. And let me show you, that is here, this button here, you just click it, and the organizer will start. And as you can see, I've already loaded a bunch of things onto um, this, this computer. And it's already done organization for me. And I have different people set up. I have places set up. And this is um, the San Diego Auto Show that, I've, that I took pictures of last year. And it's set up as a place, and uh, it's also set up as an event, because it was an event that I've gone to. And under places, I also have one where um, I took pictures of the firefighters in Boulevard of California, which is about 60 miles east of San Diego. So the organizer lets you... Um, basically organize all of your files and we'll go in depth into the organizer in a later video but right now I just wanted you to see what the organizer looked like now if um, uh, you go back to the help welcome screen and you want to go to the premier elements welcome screen and that will bring up this welcome screen again and you can go ahead and close it behind there the organizer and you can go into the video editor and that's the next thing we're going to see is the editor workspace and I'll tell you all the different parts of the workspace so let's go take a look at the video editor workspace now we can either do an existing project which I don't I don't think I've made any on here yet or we can go into a new project let's go ahead and click new project And then there's the license agreement. Since this is the first time the video editor has been run, it presents this license agreement. And I'm just going to go ahead and accept that one.
And then it also has a thing that lets you help improve the uh, the products. So if you're using this and an error comes up, it will send anonymous data to Adobe to help them improve the product. And I've always participated in it. I've never had any uh, anything happen that would cause me to not participate in it. And then it goes ahead and asks you all the different things that you um, about your job and all the other stuff. I'm just going to click done on that one. Since it's not really necessary, but it does help them um, know who's using the program and what they're using it for. But it doesn't it doesn't like send your name or your address or anything like that. It just sends, hey, this guy is an architect and he uses it this way. So now we have the the main screen of Premiere Elements up, and there's several different parts to this screen. We have the the menus up at the top, just like every other program. We have the name of the current project here. And then there's a button here to that you can click to save it. And then uh, if you want to play your video full screen, you can click this and it will play the video full screen. So you can see what it looks like full screen. And you won't have any of the other elements here distracting you. And the main section here is your video uh, monitor in right in the middle. And... There's two different modes that you can use while you're in Premiere Elements 11. And you can go back and forth between them pretty easily. And that's Quick, which has a single timeline. Um, it has a single uh, uh, video track on the timeline, video and audio track. It has one title track right above it. It has one narration track and then one audio track for like background music. But the expert view has, and let me just, if you bring your pointer right to the middle on the screen and you click and pull up, you can expose the rest of the tracks that are here. And you notice you have an audio track and a video track, number one, an audio and video track, number two, an audio and video track number three. And you can actually, if you right click and choose add tracks, you can add up to 99 tracks of audio and video to this. In on quick mode, you only have one track, one audio video track, and that's it. And this is mainly for if you want to uh, bring files in quickly, cut out scenes put some transitions and then export it and you don't need multiple layers multiple uh, layer tracks you can just put them here all in a row if you have everything just in a row and output it right away and it's quick easy and simple um, the expert mode will let you also do other things um, uh, that you can't do in quick mode uh, with multiple track, like if you wanted to make, say, four images at once on the screen, well, you can't really do that in uh, quick mode, but you can do it in expert mode because you can take four different tracks and then you tell it this one is in the upper right, upper left, lower right, lower left, and you can do that in expert mode, but not in quick mode. Quick mode is a single track and that's it. There's no way to add any tracks to it. If you right-click it, you don't get a choice of a menu here to add anything. And another big difference between quick mode and expert mode is when you add media, if you do it in quick mode, it will add it to the timeline right away. If you do it in expert mode, it will put it into the project assets folder, um, the the box here first and then you can drag it and drop it down into the timeline but on quick mode as you can see you don't even have an assets folder if you go to add media it will just add it directly to the timeline immediately it won't it won't uh, do anything 
uh, it won't store it anywhere. So if you uh, grab this graduation file and it will put it onto, as you can see, it put it onto the timeline immediately. Now, as I said before, you can go back and forth between quick mode and expert mode. Now, when I go to expert mode on the project assets, it will be listed here. Well, then I can then take it if I wanted to and put it at the end again, at the end of the timeline, and have two copies of it. I can have multiple copies from here down onto the timeline. Over here we have, um, if you choose a, a video clip down here, you, you have your adjustments here and you also have your, um, uh, applied effects here. So, again, the quick mode, it has a subset of things that you can do and the expert mode has a much higher uh, amount of things that you can do for for your um, video clips and that also uh, works with the with the uh, bar down here and this bar down here is called the action bar and what that is since uh, I don't have anything that I can redo I only have an undo here but I also have a redo, so if I do something and I undo it, I can redo it again. And there's just a single click down here to undo, and it'll keep undoing and then keep redoing, depending on how many steps you want to go forward or backward. And then there's a button here to go straight to the organizer again. Um, there's an instant movie uh, that I will show you later on how you can use instant movie to uh, give it a bunch of clips. It'll make a movie for you and... Um, you don't have, it's no muss, no fuss. You tell it to make it and it does it automatically. Under the tools menu, uh, you have a, a bunch of different things that you can do for, uh, your video editing. And uh, you have your adjustments, which is what this menu is up here. You have an audio mixer, which lets you mix your audio on the um, uh, change the volume and and you know mess around with the way that the audio is mixed together. Um, if I go to uh, quick mode, you can see that it doesn't even have the audio mixer on there. It's only on expert mode. And you also have freeze frame, which lets you pick a frame to freeze. You can set a duration. Uh, you can edit it in Photoshop Elements if you want. You can export it. You can insert it into movie. So whatever you choose here for five seconds, you put insert into movie, it'll put a five second freeze frame in there. You have a movie menu, which is used when you want to make a disc. If you want to make a disc that you can give to somebody, it will let you uh, make the menu for the disc. You can add a narration track, which on this one is right down here. You have a narration track that you can um, put on there. And you can just record it directly into, while while the video is playing, you can record it directly in the program. And we'll go over that later also. Pan and zoom are for mostly for still images, like the Ken Burns style of video editing, where you'll see a picture and it slowly moves across, and then another one fades in and it moves different directions. Smart Mix will mix your uh, background music and your foreground uh, sounds and give you, uh, it figures out, like if you hear somebody talking, it'll lower the background music. When they stop, it'll bring it back up. They start talking again, it'll go back down. That's what the Smart Mix does. And the Smart Trim will go through your video and figure out the pieces that are blurry, shaky, things that you probably don't want in your video and it will give you a choice of if you want to delete them or not. And we'll go over that also. Uh, time remapping and time stretch, you can uh, speed up and slow down your 
video for special effects. So if you have somebody running and then you want, as they pass the camera, you want it to slow down when they wave. And then after they pass, it goes back up to normal speed. You can do that too. And we'll have a, a video that goes over that also. On the transitions, um, again, I'm taking the pointer and bring it right up to the top and clicking and dragging it up. And you can see in expert mode, we have all these different types of transitions. Uh, there's, it looks like eight, eight 16 different uh, types of transitions. And each of these has uh, transitions in them, several transitions in them. Uh, this is on expert mode. If we go to quick mode and we look at transitions, again, I'm just going to click and drag this up. You notice we have 16 transitions. And the reason why we have 16 is because these are the main 16 transitions that people use. Um, they went through and figured out from previous editions and that, that, that box that uh, we went over of them helping us to improve our product. Well, they look and see a lot of people use the cross dissolve. A lot of people use the flip over. A lot of people use the page peel. So they went through and they figured out the top 16 and that's what they have for quick mode. So it just makes it quicker to choose one of these for your video editing. On the expert mode on titles and text, it's the same type of thing. We have uh, several different uh, types of titles and text. And on the quick mode, we have, we have, oh, it looks like we have all of them. Um, a, a little thing here, this little blue uh, notation here, that tells you that it is not on your computer and when the first time you use it, it will go online and download it and let you, um, uh, it basically lets you install the program faster because it hasn't installed all of this stuff on there to begin with. So if you, if you only have a few of these that you use, it will only use up the space of the few that you use instead of using up all of the space that, uh, you have on your, on your computer because they use up quite a bit of space because there's multiple titles and there's also, uh, graphics and all this stuff that, um, they, it only loads it if you need it. And once you need it, it will save it on your computer so you don't have to download it again, but it won't do it until you actually use something. So it's kind of an on demand type thing, but it doesn't cost anything. It, all these are included in the program. They just don't install them by default. So, uh, on the effects, under the expert mode, you can see that we have quite a few uh, effects in here. Under the quick mode, you can see we have video effects and film looks. And let me drag this up. And you will see again, they have the most used uh, effects that people have used. And then they also have these film looks that uh, a lot of people use just to uh, give it a specific look. And we'll go over all of these effects in, an, in a separate video. And then there's music that you can use on your timeline. Drag and drop music. And if we go to expert mode, uh, it looks like it's the same. Except we have use smart sound. Uh, smart sound is, as part of, uh, Premiere Elements, they, they, um, license some smart sound, uh, audio tracks to use for background music. And uh, we'll go over smart sound in a later video, but it's, it's one of those very easy to, um, uh, put a background sound, a specific type of sound. So if you want to give us 
a feel of action or romance or uh, serenity or they have all these different types of background music that you can put into your uh, video projects for free um, and you can even change how they sound what their duration is so if you have a scene that's 27 seconds and it's a chase scene you can tell it you need chase sound for 27 seconds and it will create it and put it onto your video um, it's just something that's that's included with Premiere Elements. And then finally we have the graphics. And uh, under the quick mode, our graphics, we have the most used graphics here. And some of these are uh, animated and some of them aren't. Uh, I know that the speech bubbles aren't. But like the angry face I believe is animated and the black cat I believe is animated. But under expert mode, just like all the other ones, you have all these different uh, types of uh, graphics that you can use in your projects for free. They're all included with the program. And uh, as you can see, there's the angry face that was um, animated and the question marks animated. And then we have animals and birds as a black cat. Uh, miscellaneous airplane and you can just take these and use them in your in your video project and it makes it much easier to add um, graphics to your to your process so instead of having like a narration saying now this is Aunt Edna you can put one of these and just put Aunt Edna on it and it will let you um, identify somebody without having to say what their name is and when we go over the birthday party video uh, I'll show you how you can use that and also for the wedding video I'll show you how you can use these graphics to make it a little easier for people to watch your video so that was the main parts of the uh, of the um, uh, layout here the main screen uh, this next part we're going to go into installing Premiere Elements 11 now if you've already installed Premiere Elements 11 you can go ahead and skip to the next video but for those that haven't let's go over how you actually install Premiere Elements 11 so let's install Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements I'm just going to show you Premiere Elements um, Photoshop Elements is about the same type of installation but let's look through this box is both of the programs and I would recommend getting both of them because you will use both of them uh, if you're doing video projects but uh, let's go through the box and see what comes in the box and then I will show you how to install Premiere Elements so you open it up and make sure there's nothing else in there and we have a getting started with Adobe Premiere Elements 11 guide which shows you um, uh, different things that are new about the program and it actually goes through and tells you how to install it but that's what I'm going to be showing you now so um, you just watch the video and then you have a getting started with Photoshop Elements 11 and it's the same type of thing. It just talks about different things that you can do inside of the program. And it's, it's not a very, as you can see, it's not a very detailed, uh, um, manual. Um, it's just the basics. And then here is what I found to be something that helps an awful lot of new users is this quick reference card. If you keep this out when you're using the program, it will it will help you for your input and output until you get used to the steps that you need to do to input and output. So just keep that handy for the first uh, few times that you pull video off of, say, your camera or off of uh, uh, the uh, DVDs. If you record DVDs, uh, keep this handy. It will help you until you're used to what the process is. 
And then you also have a free Adobe Elements um, starter kit. And you can go and download uh, a couple issues of the um, the Photoshop Elements magazine. And um, I don't believe they still have the Photoshop.com albums, but um, they also have a few tutorial videos up there that you can watch that will... Uh, go over some of the basics. And this one I got a Shutterfly $20 card. So if I want to do some, uh, print some books or photos, it's a free $20 card for a Shutterfly. And this one is good until December 15th of this year, 2013. So, uh, that's pretty nice considering that, um, I, I got this whole program on Amazon for I believe eighty nine dollars and minus twenty dollars from Shutterfly I don't have to pay that's sixty nine dollars for Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements it's a pretty pretty good deal uh, this is just a sleeve that goes over the um, uh, box and at the bottom of the box you have two serial numbers that you can use one for Photoshop Elements and one for Premiere Elements that will let you install the program I'm going to just be showing you the trial installation because um, I have it installed on another part of this computer and I don't need to install it uh, with the serial numbers. But once you open that, there are two disks in here. And you have a Mac OS disk and a Windows OS disk. Now this is different from the previous versions of these of these two programs. Before you had... Uh, a, a disk for the Mac operating system. Then you had a disk for the Windows 32-bit operating system. And then a disk for the Windows 64-bit operating system. And then you had a couple extra disks, which were the extra content that came with the program. Now, as you can see, they simplified it a lot. And when we talked about the um, the downloadable content, that's why they have it. So there's only one disk for Mac or one disk for Windows, and that's it. There's no extra disk that you have to load in at, to start with. So let me go through and um, uh, let me open this uh, drive here, and we'll put this is a Windows machine, so we'll use the Windows disk. And it wouldn't hurt to make a backup of this disk. Just make a regular copy like you'd copy anything else. That way if something happens to this disk, you have another uh, copy of it. Now, you can also, if you downloaded the file from Adobe, you can go download the um, uh, trial version of the software from Adobe. You have to have an Adobe account, which is just, you give them your email and you make a password, and then you can download the trial version. And uh, so if something happens to your disk, if you have that, then you can um, go ahead and uh, download that and install the program here so you don't have to worry about um, uh, being able to install it. And after you install it, um, if you then uh, if you then um, uh, give your serial number, the number here to Adobe, they can keep it on record. So a year from now, if you lose all this stuff and you don't know where this is and where this is, you can just go download the trial version of the software. Get the serial number that you registered with them, and you can install it on your machine um, pretty easily. Now, as you can see, it didn't uh, auto start here. So let me go ahead, and I'll hit the Windows R key to do run. And then I will browse over to our DVD drive. And it doesn't seem to see the drive. Let me... Let me find out why it's not, uh, maybe if I pull it out and then bring it back in. Let's see what happens here. 
It doesn't seem to be uh, reading the drive. I'm not sure why. Ah, here we go. So now we have the autoplay. This is, this is the program that you want to run. And normally it will just come up with a box and ask you to, if you want to run the autoplay, that's what you want to run. So I'll double click that and then click OK. And it'll give me the user account control. So if you're doing this on a, a regular user account and not the administrator account, you'll need to enter the password here. But since this is an administrator account, I'll just click yes. And now we have our main screen here to install either Photoshop Elements or Premiere Elements or both. And we want to do Premiere Elements. So I'll go ahead and click that button. And then it'll ask me what language I want to use. So I'll do English. And it will do Preparing to Install. I can go ahead and minimize this one. Just be just a second here. It'll come up with the, the main installation program. And here we go. Here's the main installation program. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. And it's going to ask me uh, what language I want to see the license agreement in. Now, people have asked me, can I install this on more than one computer? And actually, yeah, you can. You can install it on up to two computers. And let me show you the section where it talks about that. Um, I believe it's 2.1 point something or other. Subscription. Here we go. Portable or home computer use. And it says you may install a second copy of the software for your exclusive use on either a portable computer or another computer located in your home. So if you have two computers, you can install it on both of them at the same time. Uh, they only ask that you don't use them both at the same time. You can use one or the other. That way you don't have to install it here, use it, uninstall it, go over to the other computer, use it, install it, and then uninstall it to go back and forth. You can have it on installed on two different computers. And I'm going to go ahead and accept it. Now it's going to ask me my username, and it's going to default to the computer name. So I'm going to change that to my name. And then it'll ask what country you're in. And I'll go down and I'll choose United States. Down here, United States. And then I'm just, for this one, I'm just going to install the trial version. Since I'm just showing you how to install it, I'm not going to actually be using this version. I'm not going to use one of the activations on this software. I'll click Next. And this one is, if you're in a country that uses NTSC video, like United States, Mexico, Canada, Japan, uh, there's a few other countries around the world, um, you want to choose NTSC. If most of the rest of the world, you're going to choose PAL format. For, as you can see, Europe, Russia, Africa, Middle East, India, Australia, New Zealand, South Pacific, China, uh, other parts of Asia, uh, they're going to be using the PAL format. So just choose whichever version, and it's depending on what you chose on the previous screen of where you are, it will make a selection here. So if I had gone and I had put on the previous screen that I lived in uh, Iraq, you can see that it automatically chose the PAL format for me. So depending on where you tell it you are, it will choose the format that's most appropriate. But since I'm in the United States and not in Iraq, uh, I'll go ahead and choose United States. And you can see it defaulted to NTSC, which is what we want. And then I'll click Next. It's going to ask you where you want to install it on your hard drive. And it's there's really no reason to change this. Um, it's just uh, uh, the default is perfectly fine and as you can see since it doesn't say x86 after program files 
this is a 64-bit program. So if you have a 32-bit version of Windows, um, it's not going to install on your system. You have to have a 64-bit version. And if you have more than 4 gigabytes of RAM on your computer, you automatically have a 64-bit version of Windows because the 32-bit version uh, can't access more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. So, and if you're if you're not sure what type of system you have, you can always come down to the Start menu, go up to Computer, right-click on it, and choose Properties. And it will tell you, as you can see right here, this is a 64-bit operating system. You can see it right there, 64-bit operating system. If that says 32-bit operating system, Premiere Elements is not going to install on your computer, and neither is Photoshop Elements. So you want to make sure you have a 64-bit version of Windows. So we'll click Next, and it tells you that it will go, after you put in a serial number, it will go and activate itself online. Um, I do that anyway, just for the safety, because I can go and, like I said, I can download the... the um, trial version and install it at any time because they keep the key for me. I don't have to worry about losing uh, the key somewhere in my vast uh, garbage heap of papers and stuff on my desk. It's much easier. Just let them do it. And then if there's any issue, they know that you own that software. So if for some reason this might have gotten stolen and someone tried to activate it under their name, they know that I'm the one that bought the software. So they won't be able to activate it. So it's pointless for them to steal it. And then after after it does that, I'm just going to click install. Now this is going to take probably uh, five to ten minutes depending on the speed of your computer. So I'm going to come back when it's finished and we'll go over the finishing steps here. Now that it's installed, uh, there are a couple notes here. Uh, the first one is you should have QuickTime installed on your uh, computer to play MOV, MOV, MPEG-4, and uh, 3GP video. Uh, 3GP is for like your cell phone video. Um, MPEG-4 is um, a highly compressed uh, video format. It's mostly used for like Vimeo and YouTube. Uh, you can have a lot of video data in a small amount of space. And the MOV, if you're on a, a Mac, it's automatically going to have a QuickTime player installed as part of the operating system, so you don't have to worry about it. But you can just install the standard player of QuickTime, and it will let you uh, use these file, these types of files in uh, Premiere Elements. The second one is some components may require activation. So when we get to the smart sound later on, that's something that needs activation online. And if you want to upload directly to Flickr, I mean um, uh, Vimeo, um, YouTube, or Facebook, you're going to have to do um, activation online. Give them your username and password to let you upload to those three different services. So let me go ahead and click Finish. And now it's telling you you must restart the computer because it did some changes to your computer that um, it needs to restart because it's some core components of your computer. But before we do restart, let me show you. Um, if you're going to be doing Photoshop Elements, you basically it'll be the same thing. You install Photoshop Elements pretty much the same way as you do Premiere Elements. Just restart the computer and... Uh, when you're finished, as you can see, we have a Premiere Elements icon up here. Uh, you should also have it in your Start menu. Under All Programs, it should be listed over there. And then if you do Photoshop Elements, that will be also listed here and here. And you can also, if you want to, you can bring it down here and you can pin it to your taskbar if you, if you need to. Um, if you want to clear off your desktop, you can pin it to your taskbar and then you don't even have to keep this icon up here. So uh, I'll go ahead and restart the computer and hopefully I'll see you here on the next video on educator.com's Adobe Premiere Elements 11 training course. Thank you.